Welcome to Joellen's Kitchen, where we make Pennsylvania Dutch recipes to share with future generations and keep our culture alive. Today we're going to make chicken and waffles. Now the chicken part's not so hard. Really all you need, if you, you have a big family, my goodness, you can either get a pre-made whole chicken or you can roast your own chicken. But the key is the chicken <laughs> and you want to cut it into cubes or shred it um, with your fingers if it's already cooked. I'm using some raw chicken breasts today and so I'm going to be making strips first and then cut crosswise in order to make cubes. So if you can see my chicken here, we, we have our strips cut and now we're just going to crawl across to make bite-sized cubes basically. And we're going to fry this chicken, adding some water so we get a broth, a soup broth almost, because what we ultimately want to do is make gravy with our chicken and our broth. And so I'm doing this first then we're going to mix the waffles. I have my waffle iron heating up. My really old-fashioned one, oh my goodness, I had it from, it was my grandma and grandpa's out on the farm that I used to visit when I was a child. And it worked after he passed. Somehow I ended up with his waffle iron. And it worked all of these years. Um, the last time I used it, it smoked and fizzled out. The wiring left go. It was really old. It had cloth wraps around the wires. I'm going to put my chicken in here a while while I talk. <laughs> and um, my brother Danny was a young man. Uh, he's younger than me by probably at least seven years. And he had uh, cancer real bad. And um, he ended up losing his life when he was in his 30s. But the bottom line is, we knew he was terminal. And one day he said to me, do you know what I could really eat? And I said, I have no idea. He said, chicken and waffles. Oh my gosh, I dug out that old waffle iron and it worked. As soon as I was done, at the very end, the very last waffle I was making for him, didn't it burn up? So this brings back some real memories making this chicken and waffles. But I can tell you that my brother Danny was a, an avid hunter and fisherman. He loved the outdoors. Um, just a great guy. And he has a daughter and maybe I'll dedicate this particular movie or video I should say to his daughter Angela. Angela is now married and she's gone to college and we're so proud of everything she's done and doing and with her life and uh, so Angela these chicken and waffles were the last thing I made for your brother at his request. So we're gonna get the chicken cooking here and like I say you can roast it or bake it it doesn't matter what kind of chicken you're going to use to make your gravy, but I'm starting with some chicken breasts. I'm going to put them on my old oven. It's a gas stove. I, a lot of people have seen it before, but there's always somebody new. So we'll get it fired up and we'll get these things cooking. I like to use my large measuring cup as a mixing bowl and again my children are grown so I'm not going to make huge amounts but you can double quadruple whatever this recipe is you need it's just two people so I'm gonna start with one cup of flour one egg I do need to melt three tablespoons of butter or margarine, so I'm just going to drop that into my measuring cup, put it in my microwave. We just need about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. What makes it rise is baking powder, so we're going to do two teaspoons of baking powder. There's one. 
add to. Here's our melted butter. And then um, I'm going to get my handy PA preferred milk out here. And we're going to get about two thirds of a cup of milk. There we go. Pour that in. Perfect. And we're just going to whisk this together and make it into a batter that we can pour onto our griddle. Very simple recipe for waffles. A lot of people use Bisquick these days, but if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, the way Grandma used to do it, what you have is a homemade batter. Looks just like cake batter, but there's no sweetness, no sugar in this. You can, however, my grandfather, everybody ate the chicken and waffles like my brother Danny, but my grandfather, oh my goodness, he loved to put butter on it and sprinkle sugar on it and eat them that way. Quite frankly, I find that rather tasty myself. We might try it both ways. I'm going to add a cup of water to my cooking chicken so we can develop that broth we talked about. I'm also going to add a chicken boiling cube just to give it that extra bouillon flavor. And while that's cooking, finishing up cooking, we're going to make a waffle. There's a little red light on my waffle maker that goes out when it's ready. Looks like we're in business. I'm also, whoo, really smoking. I'm also going to spray a little Pam on here just to help the waffles to release when they're done. Now it might not be a perfectly round shaped waffle, but there's little uh, ripping pieces in the middle so we can put it in the different um, pieces and make both the chicken and waffles as well as a sugar waffle. So we'll let them cook and we'll see when they're ready. As you can see, the red light came back on. because we put that cool batter in on the waffle iron. It is getting down a little bit. That means they're just about ready. But I'm going to also get maybe two tablespoons of cornstarch and put them in my measuring cup. And I'm going to add a little water and stir it. And hopefully we'll have just the right consistency uh, of a paste to make gravy. If I put the water in, and just have that pasty consistency first, it doesn't tend to get lumpy gravy. I'm going to add a second cup of water. Okay, as you can see, my smoke has stopped rising. The light went out on my waffle iron, which indicates to me this waffle might be ready. We're going to open it gently because the first one's always the hardest to get out. Oh, it's perfect. Oh my goodness, look at that. A perfect waffle the first time. Isn't that grand? Doesn't it look wonderful? Okay. Okay, once again, the light has come on and there's a little bit of steam starting to rise. So we'll let that go and we'll be back to take that second waffle out. We're also going to check on our gravy. I'm going to add some celery seasoning to that right now. If you have raw celery, you could put that in. But a celery taste, I think, makes the gravy taste wonderful to me. 
have some celery seeds just to sprinkle. Quite a bit of smoke coming out of the waffle iron again. We're just waiting for it to die down and the light to go off and we'll take out our second waffle. Okay, the steam has stopped, the red light is out, we're going to check our next waffle. Look at that, we're batting a hundred or a thousand I guess as they say. And the one cup of batter that I made is going to make one more waffle, so we'll have three waffles out of this. Okay, while well, that last waffle's cooking, we're going to try one of these out. I think first I'm going to take and try one of the sugar waffles. I'm going to put some butter on there. And then just sprinkle a little sugar across the top. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Just like I remember, they are very tasty with sugar and butter on. And now I'm going to try some with the gravy and the chicken. And we just pour it on top like that, slice it and eat it. It's a cold day outside today. This is going to taste really good to my husband tonight, I hope. <laughs> mm. In case you never made waffles before, you have to know this part. As the waffles get done and you get them out, people are going to be fighting over the waffles, eating them every which way, and you're going to be watching them having such a good time. Finally, when the last waffles are out, you get one. <laughs> so uh, I remember that part too. Mm. Just so, so good. Thank you for letting me go back memory lane and making chicken and waffles the way my brother Danny used to like them. And Angela, nice to see you. Take care.